Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video I'll be showing you how to create an ombre shaded look on glass. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's take a look at how to apply this um, shaded glass material procedurally to um, the object that we've got selected, which is just a basic tumbler that I've modeled. And for those that are interested, this is how I've set the scene out. So I've got my camera, my object, um, a plane axis, which is acting as a light target. So I've tracked three lights, a back one, and then a left and right one, and then just a big light just uh, falling onto the backdrop there. So let's take a look at what that currently looks like in the shading tab with viewport shading enabled. Uh, so let's select our object and I've got a basic principled BSDF applied to it. Um, and that's really what it looks like right now. So let's get some things going on here. First, we need to drop the roughness down to let's say 0 0.01, we want a tiny bit of roughness. And then we're gonna increase the transmission to one so we can see right through it. So we've got a glass-ish material there. What I'm gonna to do um, to that is add a gradient texture. So Shift A, gradient texture, and take the factor from that and plug it into the base color. Now it's actually running across at the moment, so we need to change that. So we'll need a texture coordinate and a mapping node. So if you've got Node Wrangler enabled, press Control T and they will appear. Um, if you haven't, just Shift A and search for them in the normal way. We're then gonna connect up the object output and apply that to the vector. And then we can rotate on the Y axis until we get that into the orientation we want. And I want it running from top to bottom. If you want it running some other way, then just play around with that. Now it's a bit intense right now um, and it doesn't really have any color. So to counteract that, we are going to apply a color ramp. Change the interpolation mode to B-spline, and that gives us a slightly softer gradient. Then, in color one, just choose something fairly mid-range, so a value of 0.5, and then saturation will take down, let's say, to about 0.95, I mean, take up, and then hue, just circle around until you find the color you want. And I wanted kind of a a whiskey smoked glass. So I'm going for, let's go for 0.1. Now this end value, this white, is the cutoff where it turns to clear glass. So if we crunch that in, the gradient will rise up the glass. I'm gonna position it at around 0.75. I'm not too keen on that color actually. Um, so I went away and had a look at hex value, which is FFC 500. And that gives me a nice bright yellow. So I get this nice smoky look. And I'm gonna select this white and add another marker in between. Um, then I might crunch both up a bit. So I've just increased the, or sorry, decreased the saturation on that second color. And then the white, I might take it further down. In fact, I might bring this over and bring this down maybe. No, I think I'll leave it as it was. So undo. And believe it or not, that is actually it. This one was super quick and simple. I would love to drag it out for you, but there really is no point. 
Um, you can also, by the way, actually, let me just let's copy that color and paste it. You can actually have a double uh, double ended um, ombre effect, and you can of course move it as well. So let me reset back to where I was. Use the X value to push it up. And I can string that out a bit and bring that further down. So you get then a much softer gradient from coming top to bottom. So that was the X value on the mapping node that I was changing there, just to move it up and down. And that's based on my object orientation. You may need to use one of the others, depends what you've got set up for the actual object that you are shading. So let me quickly render that out. I'm gonna use, let's say, 256 samples with denoising enabled and just the default light settings and reflective and refractive enabled in caustics. And there we go, there's our ombre shaded glass. I hope you've enjoyed this quick one. Um, if you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up and of course subscribe for future content. Please do go back and plunder the playlist. There's lots more shading tutorials that I've got listed there. Um, and in the meantime, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.